All right. So now we're back with Amaresh Mishra, um, author of War of Civil 1857, War of Civilizations. And we're back talking about Gaza, uh, the war. The main thing I, I, I wanted to ask you, what, what do you think? I mean, what what do you think Iran is going to do? Why do you think Iran has waited this long? And, and I mean, it's just it always seems to escalate. It never seems to de-escalate. I think we're going to see more escalation. What do you see as the next phase of the war? You no, know, Iran is kind of uh, implementing uh, this uh, this classic policy that after that, you know, keep the enemy uh, fearful. Keep the enemy fearful. Uh, in Hindi, we say that the sword which hangs on your head and you don't know when it's going to strike. That is more terrifying than the actual strike. And this is this is what Iran is doing. This classic Asian thing against Israel. That Israel uh, expected an Iranian strike. They prepared for it. It didn't come. Then there was... Then, uh, the, then the U.S. sent some more, you know, cruise ships and and uh, aircraft carriers to uh, you know to Israel and and and. But uh, but Iran is is uh, is waiting, and each day, and each day which which passes by, Iran gets stronger in the sense that uh, that you know Russians have landed there, Russian uh, uh, Russian arms have landed there. China, uh, this whole, uh, un, I mean, there was this axis of resistance. Now there is another axis of uh, powers behind the axis of resistance, like Russia, China, North Korea. It's very clear these three, uh, these three countries, even North Korea has deployed weapons on the on the on the Korean uh, South Korea North Korea borders, and China, of course, is locked in. Uh, historic confrontation with the U.S. on various fronts. Uh, and China has also hosted the Palestinian, you know, all the factions. They called Hamas and, you know, Hamas and Fatah had some kind of a uh, true stock there in China, in, in Beijing. Imagine who would have thought that, you know, <laughs> that the Palestinian factions ending up in China. And this is all, all because Iran, China and Russia, they have formed a solid bond. And it's a bond and it's a chain where uh, where basically uh, they will come to each other's aid. This is for sure. Yeah, some some Iranian weapons have also found their way into Russia and and they are being used uh, in the in the Ukrainian war. And Russia is facing this offensive in the in the Kursk region, which has which which finally Putin I think has run out of patience with NATO. And uh, he's going to, he's, he's also, that is another chapter. Iran will strike. Russia also has to strike Ukraine in a very decisive manner, which sends out a, a kind of a loud and clear message. Now, Iran Iran is planning to strike on, on, on various fronts. It is not just a direct strike from, from, uh, from Iran that will come. Yesterday, Hezbollah struck like, um, at least uh, more than 30, 40 Katyusha rockets uh, in, the, in, in the Israeli base of Jetu. And uh, many of them, you know, they were not, uh, uh, the Iron Dome failed to, uh, to, to intercept them. And there was extensive damage. It was, it was, uh, uh, Hezbollah has been doing this for some time, but then uh, this time, uh, I mean, large large areas were consigned to flames. There was a big fire, so all these things which are going on. Then Hamas uh, Hamas released a video, and I, and I think that particular thing also played a major role in what uh, you know in the reaction of of IDF. Hamas released a video two days back. No, uh, yesterday. Yesterday uh, they uh, they released a video. Which is actually about an incident on twenty fifth July two thousand twenty four, and in that video, uh, the mines. Uh, I mean, it, at a certain point in in Gaza, the Hamas fighters had planted mines in December two thousand twenty three, 
and there was a, a set of fighters who were waiting for eight months for Israel to walk into an ambush. Eight months. I have not. I mean, I am a war historian, and uh, I have studied besides eighteen fifty seven. I have studied the Second World War, the First World War. Maybe th there might be some isolated incidents here and there, but th but I have not heard of this kind of a thing where fighters are waiting for eight months at their position. Fighting is going on, you know, left, right, center. They are not participating in those fights which their comrades are fighting. They are just waiting for that one thing. This is Yaya Sinwa. This is Yaya Sinwa. Ye, this, this, is, this is, see, so you have a man here who can plan and execute and who has the control because this requires immense control. Uh, of uh, of fighters, you know, by a high leadership and an immense amount of uh, and an immense amount of discipline by the fighters themselves, and that uh, you were mentioning his book and and that book is is you know it gives you some insights. But for me, I know that because Yaya Sinwar uh, is is kind of a mautsitun of uh, because he he is he combines military and political capabilities. Mao was a great fighter, also he. You know, uh, he was a great general on the field as well, and and he was, of course, politically he outplanked Chiang Kai Shek. So Sinwar has this, you know, has these capabilities, and and he's showing, and he's showing them one by one. And when the when when Hamas says that there is more to come, and they always say there is more to come, it it has to be taken very very seriously because right now the political situation is that there is a rift within Israel. Even if that rift is kind of uh, you know shadow boxing, still it is some form of boxing. So that 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 uh, that impacts uh, IDF and soldiers on the ground, and and the cry that you know what Gallen said that uh, this, all, all this talk of absolute victory is rubbish. Pure IDF nonsense, also yeah. uh, IDF also said uh, yeah. many officers wrote to. The senior commander saying that you know enemy is not going anywhere. This is going to be a, a long hard fight, and and uh, the, all this talk about degrading Hamas is uh, is useless. Uh, about eighty percent of Hamas is still intact. They are not only intact; they are launching rockets from Gaza to yeah. the Israeli settlements, and they are constantly uh, flying drones now. They are getting more and more. Uh, not just aggressive, but but their weaponry is also increasing. Yeah. And again, I would say that uh, Yaya, uh, after Yaya Sinwar got the you know, overall in charge, and the and the uh, uh, he's is, he's is the army chief as well as the military. I mean, as well as the political chief. See, now now uh, now uh, America and, and yesterday I saw that this desperate statement by Germany, France, and United States. I've never seen anything like this. They are saying that we will immediately implement the, the ceasefire and the host, and, and they are so afraid of Iran striking that they want an immediate deal with uh, with Hamas, and in which they think they'll browbeat Netanyahu into into accepting. And this is but Hamas said that we already accepted the Biden yeah. proposal. Exactly. We Hamas said, accepted. "Hamas said no. Uh, thanks. Just implement July second, and and we're fine." Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, so again, the ball is in their court, and they have unilaterally, you know, fixed fifteenth August as a kind of a date where, where, where. Uh, so Hamas is saying, "So we are ready," and they have even uh, they have even appointed a new negotiator, Alhia, I think. Yeah. So. So, so I mean, with with Iran holding all all, all the cards right now, unless I, now even if uh, Israel does a preemptive does a preemptive strike on on Iran, which they are talking about, now that will that will surely drag in Russia and yeah, and all, that, and yeah they've got to be very careful with that because the air defense, you know, the the whole the whole prestige. The, the reason I think Iran has been hesitating is they don't want to do a strike that gets shot down where all the all their missiles get shot down because that looks pretty bad. But if yeah. Israel tries to do a preemptive strike and their planes get shot down, 
that'll look really bad. So yeah, that is, that is be careful. That is good. Yeah. So this is a, a very you know this is the kind of battle of of nerves and of very yeah. like even as even small moves can can trigger yeah. large a larger events and uh, you must have heard of the Arab uprising against the uh, against uh, American backed uh, I would say terrorists but oh, American in Syria. backed you know, yeah 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 Syria yeah yeah so the, I mean what is that it, now you see the Conoco oil fields in in, in Syria all uh, the Ain Al Assad base the Al Tanf yeah. base these are all American bases on Syria and Iraq yeah. border. Yeah, and the Arab tribes and these Arab tribes who are who have risen up, they are mostly Sunnis. Mm -hmm. They're not Shia. Right. And these are and uh, Iran has been successful in in building this uh, large coalition of Shias and Sunnis. Something unthinkable, even uh, like thirty you know thirty years back, even ten years back, and uh, with the Taliban also backing. Uh, Backing Iran, yes. you know, in, in, yeah. in some way, yeah, 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 they are absolutely. And so, 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 and, and this, and and this Arab uprising, it has taken the form of, uh, and where many of these, uh, the Syrian Socialist Party, has has actually trained many of these Arab fighters, oh. and the and they are attacking areas which are not under the control of. Uh, uh, of the Assad government, so that's right. Assad government and these tribes and Russia, they are on one page, and America is is getting surrounded, literally surrounded, as we mm -hmm. talk uh, there in that area, uh, Syria, Iraq. And so, and I don't know if you saw the news from Abu Obeda, where he said that some two separate incidents where a guard in charge of one of the Israeli hostages killed the hostage. Yeah. Uh, another incident where two other hostages were wounded. What do you? Yeah, what yeah. Do you so make these of things that? are happening. Yeah, yeah. Because ultimately, uh, I think uh, Hamas also wants to to send a message. I mean, Hamas mm -hmm. wants to send a message that this uh, that the captives, their life is also the responsibility of Israel. It is not right. just us. Right. It is not that you know. It it is it is our captives and it is. Our, we have done what we can, and we are still doing it. But then there are always, uh, but there will always be incidents with the level of, like the Al Taibin massacre, the the, uh, the latest massacre, where there was so many intellectuals who were wiped out, and there was so and and Israel said there were nineteen Hamas people there, hundreds hundreds killed, and they couldn't uh, point out one name, one Hamas name amongst the whole list. Of uh, of of the hundred plus killed, Hamas wants to give this message to the Israeli society that your captives are not safe, and 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 uh, it is not that Hamas would execute them. The point is that the Hamas fighters who are uh, or or the or the resistance fighters who are guarding those captives, they are human beings, and all these things will affect them. And sooner or later, captives. Will try to break out also because for how long are they going to stay there? They will yeah. try to break out, and if there is a shootout, then then several captives will be killed. Yeah. So this is this is the, and now you see uh, the whole uh, resentment in in the after Ismail Haniya was killed, the uh, the idea of negotiators, the Israeli negotiators were angry. They were saying that we you killed the man we were talking to, mm -hmm. right? And then and and then the other part is that if you ro even if you're not serious about the hostage uh, or bringing the hostages back alive, then why the talks? Then right. just you see. But as Motris said, uh, that uh, I mean, if it was left to us, we would have starved the two million people of Gaza to death. It is it is the international community which is not allowing us to do. And what and he expressed his his right wing helplessness. That what are we? I mean, what can we do? Because this is not possible. That we can't really kill yeah. two million people. We we can't stop them. But they have already killed two percent of of the Gazan you know population. So this is the so this is a again a very you know a kind of spider's web which Nasrallah likes to talk about always. You know, in in his speech they're talking. 
Yeah. Israel is weaker than a spider's web. So, uh, so there is a spider's web which which Israel is finding hard to to tackle. Which uh, which you know they're getting lost. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So so you but you you think that Iran is going to do something? Iran is going to yeah, strike yeah. at some point. Iran. Yeah. Iran is going yeah. to hit uh, hit Israel yeah. uh, in the belly, and it yeah. is going to be. Uh, I mean, quite fatal uh, because, you see, American elections will be decided in October. Yeah. And uh, whichever way the wind goes, uh, Iran will strike just before that. Oh, right. This is, this is, yeah. They so will, you they think it could be a long, with... it could be a long wait. You don't think it's going to be is, this yeah, week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. see. No, indeed. It can, uh, they can do it early as well because if he, if he, if Israel uh, you know, does the preemptive yeah. on them, then 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 things might change. But Iran is uh, is kind of bleeding uh, Israel right now. Yeah. They are uh, you know forcing thousand cuts on uh, on Israel. Uh, it is building an atmosphere where yeah. all the all the pro American and the pro Israeli forces like the Serial Democratic Front. Yeah. Uh, the so-called Free Syrian Army, which was which earlier there, now, now it is the SDF, and many of the you know who have captured parts of of uh, South Sea, you know the yeah. the, uh, the southern areas of of Syria, all these all the, so uh, evicting and ejecting all those forces, and kind of making the 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 path of access of resistance clear that we should. That we should be in control of those areas, and uh, and and then there is another plan. Plan uh, apart from striking Israel, of surrounding the U.S. bases, yeah. and of ultimately forcing the U.S. to leave. Because Iraqi uh, Iraqi President Sudani, he also very clearly said that you uh, that uh, basically U.S. had promised to yeah. move out its bases some time back. Now they have to give us a deadline. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna but go it, on. No, but listen, it all it all boils down to, I mean, imagine such, uh, this this kind of a massive churning, and this is all. It all boils down to the decline of U.S. as a as a superpower. Yeah, and yeah. the emergence of a multipolar world, and the and the problem of American elites. You know, they are they are not ready to recognize. Yeah. That this has happened. I mean, Trump is their is their face, which he tries to all the time. He tries to mock the new realities, and it feels as if America is still in a position to go the, to go there and to yeah. uh, do an Iraq. But those days are over. Those yeah. days are over. American dominance is finished. It is yeah. no longer even in a place like Bangladesh. Even if CIA had a hand in, in what is happening right now, uh, the uh, the forces unleashed in Bangladesh they have gone beyond uh, uh, yeah. American control. I America has right. they, they they don't have uh, they don't uh, I mean you see uh, Middle East they uh, uh, they are uh, they are fighting with the back to their wall. South Asia, if you cut. The biggest America's biggest failure is the is the inability to pressurize India, which was I mean they got their man as prime minister, yeah, and it was it was the kind of game which the British used to play and which Americans said that we'll we'll also, you know that that yeah. uh, a kind of uh, implementing their agenda through through uh, through an Indian, uh, you know, Space. yeah. Uh, so, so, but they failed because ultimately Modi ended up at Putin's door. Yeah. Because yeah. and and okay. uh, yeah, yeah, you can't. You see, you can't change India's geographic location. Yeah. You can't change India's national interest. And Modi, despite all his friendship with Netanyahu and his real sympathy with the American uh, Israel uh, axis, he has not been able to openly declare India in their favor because. It just goes against uh, the entire system or or India's yeah. national interest, and he is not. He's he he's he's 
Modi is mortally afraid of ending up like uh, Mujibur Rahman. He is actually, and, yeah. he, and because if he if he if he pokes the system too much, then then the system will react. Yeah. And in India also, you know, uh, the the bureaucrats and and a big section of of the even the even the bourgeoisie, uh, they are uh, even the so-called crony capitalists who are close to Modi. They can do a turnaround anytime turn. because Make it doesn't suit else. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't suit them to be uh, like uh, slavishly pro-American. Yeah, they want all their op- uh, they want all their options open, like like always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. as they're as capricious as the West, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah sure. weather friends. So okay, well, um we'll 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 do this again soon. I'm sure there'll be plenty more to talk about. Uh thanks for joining me tonight, Amaresh. I know it's morning for you, but it's late night for me. Uh um, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. It was a lovely um, talk. And we'll talk again soon, man. Yeah.